In this episode, I will demonstrate how to draw a very simple snowboard and apply a pattern to it in Inkscape version 0.46. The idea for this screencast actually came a few weeks ago when I was doodling around with snowboard patterns. I saw a couple snowboard tutorials online and thought I would take a crack at it too. I ended up posting an image of my snowboard on our Flickr site and I think Richard hinted that I should make a screencast of it, so I thought why not. As far as a pattern went, I was looking for something orange, something grungy to apply to the surface of the snowboard. My first instinct was just to hunt down a freely available texture online. That's what I used for the image that I posted on Flickr. That obviously was easy enough to do, so then I thought about just making my own raster pattern with the help of GIMP. However, since I'm a bit lazy about things, I started looking for grunge style brushes that I could freely download and use in GIMP. My search took me to a gem of a website that folks can uh, download some really groovy uh, brushes. It's, I think it's pronounced hawksmont.com. And when you get there, uh, you're going to find just a bunch of GIMP brushes. And uh, what you're looking for is the grunge brush. You can find that and uh, download the zip file with the brushes inside and you need to put those brushes in your, for example, if you're on Ubuntu, uh, you would put it in your home user directory .gimp. Um, for example, mine is .gimp-2.6 and brushes. So stick them in there, everything will work just fine. If you're on a Windows system, um, I think they go in your program files. Uh, look for your GIMP directory and you'll find your brushes directory. Just throw them in there and uh, start up GIMP and you'll have everything you need. Again, that's uh, I think it's pronounced hawksmont.com. Uh, check it out. Um, even though grunge patterns can uh, can be created in Inkscape with some vector kung fu, I thought it would be simpler and take much less time, especially for the people that our screencast cater to, if we got GIMP involved. After all, I use GIMP as often as I use Inkscape, and they have always gone hand in hand on my projects. Uh, anymore, I find it hard not to at least have both of these things installed on all my computers, so they, they complement each other very well. All right, so let's get on with the tutorial. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle, and I'm going to make this rectangle. We'll make it about uh, 600 wide, and I'll make it 110 high. Okay, that's about the basic uh, length and width of a snowboard. Um, if you're unfamiliar with snowboarding, snowboards come in all kinds of sizes, and it's usually dependent on your height. Uh, for example, my snowboard is uh, its about a whole head shorter than your body uh, height, so this is a good size anyways okay so now next thing we're gonna do is double click on this and we're gonna yank on this circle at the top and we're gonna make the entire thing circular so we have a pill shaped button like this okay now what I'm gonna do is select this image we will go object to path and when we do that it converts our, our object to a path and applies some nodes around here we need to add some nodes in the middle. So what I'm going to do is window around these bottom two nodes and hit my plus button. And I'll do it again on top. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select these two nodes on the inside and make selected nodes smooth. Okay. That way when I bend them, I'll get a nice curvature around here. I'm going to leave uh, these nodes on the end uh, corners because uh, on snowboards, on some snowboards, you have just, it's not quite blended as much, okay? So I'll double click this, select on this node, and I'm going to use my arrow key. And again, uh, while I'm talking about this, I'm sorry that I don't have my key status monitor working um, on this episode as well. Um, there's still a bit of a problem with it and I haven't figured it out so I'll just have to explain to you what I'm doing okay I'm gonna use my up arrow key and I'm gonna step in three times okay I'm gonna do that to the top one use my down arrow key one two three okay and that gives me my shape of the snowboard 
okay and this is pretty much the tutorial right here I mean if you were to take the grunge pattern out drawing the snowboard shape is is very simple okay so we have a snowboard shape next let's fire up um, GIMP and let's draw our um, our grunge pattern okay so I'll start up GIMP I have GIMP 2.6.1 I think okay now what I've done in GIMP ahead of time is I've turned off some of my dialog boxes so you know I can fit the thing into the, my recording screen here um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to new and if you remember we created our snowboard at 600 by 110 so I'm gonna make my pattern 610 by 120 that way it'll overlap just a little bit and then I'll hit OK alright and if you've applied your grunge brushes normally when you select your brush button in GIMP you'll see your grunge patterns down here okay you already have a few in here I think they're called galaxy or something or other but we're interested in the grunge brushes that we just uh, applied okay so I'm gonna pick my first grunge brush and when you bring it in they're kinda big um, you can use your scale button here make it any size you want if you want it bigger smaller let's just go back down to one and I'm gonna start off with a black color and basically what it does is it fills uh, the white space that you have in here fills in with your color so if I were to click it right now you'll see that I get a fill in right here I'll just do a control Z to back up and what I'm gonna do is start up just a little higher and pick it and I'm gonna move over and get something about like that okay and that's kinda like the, the bottom foundation to our grunge pattern I'm gonna start off with black next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to multiply so when we add colors it just keeps layering on top allowing us to see the color from underneath okay if you hit just um, the normal then you're just painting on top of it and you're gonna lose some of your colors so I'm gonna pick a different pattern this time I'm gonna pick orange and depending on what I want to do I can just play with it a little bit here but I can just strike it off just to get a little orange on there okay I think that looks pretty good and I'll change my brush again and I'll change my color and we'll make this just a little darker red okay and we don't want to get too busy with our grunge pattern so let me just throw on some red here okay I think that looks pretty good and what else do we need probably should throw some yellow in there okay okay I think that's getting a little busy but I think it looks pretty good maybe we'll throw some yellow over here okay now let's back out here and see what we've got okay so that's our grunge pattern and it's a little busy I'll admit um, you can just play around with that just a little bit to to get it so it's not quite so uh, confusing um, but if you're satisfied with it and that's what you want uh, then we'll go ahead and save it so we'll do a save um, give it any name you want but I'm gonna send it on my desktop so I can drag it into Inkscape and we'll just call this uh, I'll call it raster.png and I'll save it out and what's great about these snowboards is you can come up with just about any kind of uh, a pattern or a design for the deck uh, it works the same way for uh, skateboards, surfboards. I mean, I, I know some of you have probably seen snowboard tutorials online, and they've just there's all kinds of designs, and you can just go go hog wild with it. It's it's a rather fun. 
Anyways, back to Inkscape. So, thanks, GIMP, for your help. We'll uh, go ahead and quint that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is bring in my raster image. Okay. So, let's see here. What do we have? Um, we have our snowboard shape. We have our raster image. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to duplicate this. We'll make this a little lighter, and we'll use that as our base shape. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. Make this a little, little bit lighter, and I am going to select our raster shape. I'll select our duplicated copy, and we're going to align that on each other, just like that. And I need to bring this to the front. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, um, matter of fact, that's going to get a little busy that way. Let's do it this way. Let's drag this down. Go the other way with it. Okay. Now we're going to take this image and we are going to bring it to the top. I'm going to select around both of these shapes. We're going to go to Object, Clip, Set. And I want to back up on that. Let's try that again. We'll do, get that shape back here. We'll do Shift, grab that, and we'll try it again. And I didn't get it that time either. Let's send this to the back. Sometimes I got to do a little trial and error because I forget. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. I I get stupid sometimes. Okay, so anyways, that is our clipped shape. We'll send that to the top, and that's basically what we're going to put on top of our uh, snowboard. Um, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Actually, before I duplicate it, I'm going to add a stroke around here. And we'll make that stroke just a little lighter yet. And we'll make it about one and a half. Um, that'll kind of simulate the, uh, the stainless steel edges around here. I know the edges don't extend all the way around the board. They only extend on the, on the sides, but it should be just fine for what we're doing. Um, before I put this on top, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the uh, binding holes. And we don't have to get too specific with it. What I'm going to do is uh, draw a square. And I'm going to remove the stroke. And I'm going to make this square uh, about 22 pixels. And I'll show you what I'm doing with this here. So let's zoom in on this square. Let's make a circle. Um, I'm going to make the circle about four pixels in diameter, and we'll make it black for now. Okay. And we'll line that up here. Move this over. Okay, we want to push the circle over to the left, and we want to push it all the way up to the top. Okay. I will make, um, let's see, I want to make a, I'll just go ahead and duplicate this. Probably should use clones, but it doesn't really matter since I'm not using a lot of these. Uh, duplicate this and duplicate this. Okay, now we're going to select this circle. Select that square. Push that over up to the top. We'll take this, take our square. Push that down, over to the side, select our square, down to the bottom, over to the side. Now, asking yourself, hey, Heathen X, how come you just didn't use the uh, tile clones or you didn't use the uh, transform button to uh, make a pattern there? Well, that's the flexibility inkscape. So if you're just throwing something together real quick, you can use shapes to, uh, to align things. So what do you think of that? <laughs> Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll group that. 
and I'll put this down in here and I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm just gonna fudge this uh, typically I think you should have about 19 inches between uh, hole patterns uh, that's about right I think uh, for bindings but uh, it really doesn't matter we're just gonna we'll throw this on here and what I'm gonna do is highlight both of these and we are going to center them up okay and I'm gonna ungroup both of these and I'm gonna get rid of the thing that we've drawn inside here and I'm only gonna put We'll go ahead and group that. I'm only going to put a four slot pattern instead of an eight. Um, some of your longer snowboards, uh, you'll be able to change your, your footing and your binding location depending on how tall you are, depending on how long your stance is. But I think this is good enough. So I'll select that pattern. I'll select my snowboard shape and we'll center it up on the snowboard. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that this is all the way to the top and for now I'll leave that but we're gonna have to end up moving that back out to the top so let's just zoom up on where we were okay I've got my stroke around here I've got my binding pattern uh, hole locations um, the next thing that I'm gonna do is duplicate this and I'm gonna change the color to black we can do that by taking a pattern dropping it down on our fill dropping it down on our stroke uh, having that selected we'll give this about a we'll try like a two for a blur that'll give us just a little bit of a, a background shading we'll put that all the way down on the bottom and it kinda gives us I guess a, an outer glow a little bit of a shadowing and really it's not all that realistic it just kind of just kinda pushes out the snowboard so it's not flat up against the canvas okay so let's see where we are um, you need to take this texture take our snowboard we'll do last selected We'll center these up and it's hard to see our whole patterns that's okay what we're gonna do whoops select our whole pattern make it just a little bit of a gray okay now that's basically the snowboard right there but we're not done let's add a Burton logo to it okay and we're gonna do that by dragging in a Burton logo now this is a logo that I clipped off the website uh, off of Google Images I believe and I think it's okay to use the Burton logo since uh, I don't make any money on these videos and it's just for uh, showing you guys how to design anyways so I don't think I'm gonna get in trouble with Burton but we'll just carry on and use this and what I'm gonna do is uh, trace a bitmap so I can convert this raster image to vector uh, I'm gonna do that by uh, just selecting two colors here because I only have white and uh, black uh, I'm gonna set this to grays I'm gonna set it to smooth stack scans and remove the background there's no background on this the white actually happens to be transparent but I'm gonna go ahead and check it anyways I'm gonna give this about four scans I'm gonna set my threshold down to 0.1 and 0.3 having it selected I'll go ahead and hit update so I can see what it looks like in my preview screen I think it looks pretty good so I'll hit OK and we've got it traced okay so now we can select uh, if you're not sure which one is your image and which one is your vector if you select on it and look down in your status bar it says image if you select the other one it says I have a group of three objects okay so now we can take this and remove it and just like I said before we have a grouping here if we ungroup it you'll see that you have uh, since we used grayscale and told it to uh, use I think we said three maybe we did four I don't know um, but we've got a stack scan what you can do is leave those okay and uh, leave them on top of each other or we can just delete them if you find one that's good enough 
change it black and you only have one scan so however you want to do that okay so let's take this and skew this thing way far down zoom back up on our canvas here and make this just a little bit bigger okay we've got this Burton uh, vector image well what do we do with it well let's take it and rotate it change its color a little bit we're gonna put it on our snowboard here now okay I think that looks pretty good we'll put that in about in the middle okay and it's a little dark um, we should try a yellow get it to stand out a little bit kinda look for a let's look for a grungy green color there's a dark green right there okay and what I'm gonna do is select that logo this snowboard image and I'll center that up okay and I think what I'm gonna do is let's see here uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, take our snowboard here and we need to get behind um, behind this image texture and get to the gray pattern below so what we can do I'll just hold my shift key actually you can hold your uh, alt key to get down into it but I wanna make sure that you guys uh, are following me here so what I'm gonna do is hold my shift key down arrow up a couple times just get it out of the way I'll do a duplicate on this and I'll bring this back out to the front and what I'm gonna do is do a clipping okay so I always get this backwards so we'll select our snowboard we'll select our logo and we'll do a clip okay and I'm gonna move this back down again and shift two steps to get it back down and since that's a little dark we want to make that a little transparent what we can do is a couple things we can either take this and move its transparency down for example like I go 50 percent but that looks a little faded so let's undo that and what I could do is go to my layers make a new layer call it logo and I'm gonna add that I'm gonna make that logo a multiply I'm gonna select my logo I'm gonna hold my shift key down page up button I've moved my uh, logo um, my Burton logo to the logo layer here okay so I can shut it off turn it back on lock it whatever and by using multiply um, it kind of fades in to the background just like we did when we were using GIMP to uh, to multiply these uh, colors on top of each other so we can make that just a little bit darker lighter so we get it quite right here kind of want it to stand out but it seems to be hidden behind our black um, so what we can do is uh, we'll push over a little bit we can see the text there I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo on that put it back in the middle and we'll go back into layers and let's see what we've got okay there's a screen there's a darken there's a lighten kind of 
just keep fiddling here until we find something that looks somewhat appealing. We may have to go back to normal actually. Get this thing quite right. Alright, there we go. There's a nice deep color there. And we're going to take this, and since we've kind of switched gears and not used the layer, I'm going to go ahead and take this and give it just a little bit of a blur. Let's try one. Okay. So we've got our Burton logo on there, and uh, good enough, okay? So let's take this and group everything together. That's pretty much our snowboard, and we're going to draw a background. And before we do that, I want to make sure that we're back on our layer one and not our logo layer. Try it again. Okay, that's good enough. And we'll make this all black. And we have to make that 100% transparency. There we go. And we're going to give this background a little bit of a gradient. So we're going to grab our gradient tool pick all the way to the top, slide it all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to hold my control key down so it stays straight. And I'm going to add a gradient in the middle, a gradient stop. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make this bottom black and the gradient stop in the middle, we're going to make it gray. And then we can go ahead and, and move that up just a little bit. And if it's a little too light, can make it just a little bit darker. So we've got something about like this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to duplicate this. I'll slide this down. And we'll mirror it. Push it just below, go just a little bit lower. That's fine. And I actually see a mistake. So we're going to go ahead and fix this mistake. Our logo is going outside, so we're going to have to take it and not blur it. I'll just go ahead and bump the transparency down just a little bit. It's not quite so dark. And again, this is just an example of how you could put a logo on there. That's not, maybe not what you'd end up with. Okay, so let's try this again. We'll take this and we'll group everything and we'll duplicate and we'll flip, get a mere copy of this, okay, and we're going to shove this just below, about right there, and we're going to make a reflection out of this, so we're going to have to draw a square, rectangle, Okay, let's push this about in the middle, about right there. We'll make its transparency 100. We'll make it all black, and we have to give it a gradient. Okay, so we'll start at the top, grab our gradient tool, drag it down to the bottom. We'll select this bottom button, the blue tag here, and then we'll make it white. Okay, and now I'm going to change the gradient. OK, 
Okay, and basically what you see here in the white, you've seen us demonstrate this several times on screencasters videos. We're going to give this just a little bit of a drop, or I'm sorry, of a uh, of a gradient there, and we're going to select window around both shapes here, our snowboard behind and the shape that we've just drawn and we're going to go to mask okay and that's kind of the uh, Nico and uh, Richard Cairn way of making uh, um, a reflection okay so once we get that kind of push that down just a little bit and maybe that's good enough okay so you've designed your first snowboard pattern uh, you've got a logo on there and maybe the pattern's not the greatest the logo's not the greatest but in a screencast it's good enough um, like I said before you can uh, with these methods you can design skateboard decks uh, surfboards any flat surface um, you can put a little lighting up here uh, put a little uh, a glare if you'd like uh, but most of all, if you just want to design some snowboards, then uh, I have hopefully just taught you some skills on how to do that. So that's our screencast. So thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X.